This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh, with part two of our discussion about U.S.-North Korea relations with Christine Ahn. We continue our look at North Korea, where tensions continue to mount with the United States, as President Trump is slated to leave later this week for a 12-day visit to Asia. A month ago, Trump publicly undermined efforts by the U.S. to open direct talks with North Korea over the country's nuclear weapons program. A day after Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said that the U.S. has two or three back channels open to North Korea's leadership and that he was pursuing dialogue, Trump responded to the news, tweeting, quote, I told Rex Tillerson our wonderful Secretary of State, that he's wasting his time trying to negotiate with Little Rocket Man. Save your energy, Rex. We'll do what has to be done. Trump has previously threatened to unleash fire and fury on North Korea and told the United Nations General Assembly he was prepared to destroy the entire nation of 25 million people. This is Republican Senator Bob Corker Sunday. Speaking on Face the Nation, Corker, who's also chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, warned against compromising efforts at diplomacy with North Korea. When our Secretary of State is sitting down with, our, with the partner that matters most, China, trying to negotiate something that would resolve and keep us from going into military conflict with, with, with North Korea, which brings in South Korea, Japan, China, and Russia, and he's kneecapped by the president, it hurts our nation. It hurts our efforts. It leads us more fully towards the conflict that most of us would like to see resolved in another way. The tweets that are sent out mocking a leader of another country raises tensions in the region. And so people are sitting there, they know they've got an erratic leader in North Korea. They've lived with three erratic leaders. Actually, this is the third one. And then when we start exhibiting some of those same tendencies, it creates uh, an air that leads, again, more fully towards conflict, where what we need to be doing is supporting the efforts that Secretary Tillerson yeah. and Secretary you, Mattis, who's involved in this diplomacy, are carrying out. So that's Senator Bob Corker, chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, the Republican from Tennessee. And we're turning now to Christine Ahn for part two of our conversation. Christine is founder and executive director of Women Cross DMZ, a global movement of women mobilizing to end the Korean War, joining us from Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, Christine, so you hear these Republican senators, people like Bob Corker, and then you have Mattis, who is in South Korea, um, who are clearly uh, trying to pull back Donald Trump and his rhetoric against North Korea and who he calls the little rocket man, uh, Kim Jong-un. Can you talk about both what's happening on the floor of the Senate among the Republicans to what's happening around the world mobiliz mobilizing as President Trump plans this trip uh, later this week to Asia, including going to South Korea? Well, it's 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 phenomenal. I mean, I've been doing this work for, you know, nearly two decades, and the kind of mobilization and fear and uh, resistance that I've seen across this country is just remarkable and heartening. Um, and I think because of that, because there has been a, a call for national mobilization to stop a U.S. Trump uh, war on North Korea, that um, you know, protests, uh, teach-ins, uh, webinars, I mean, all sorts of, you know, actions to both educate a U.S. population that has been so woefully uneducated and misinformed about, you know, the roots of this historic conflict. I mean, it's important to remember that uh, the 1950 to 53 Korean War ended just with a ceasefire. That is, you know, a very fragile truce that has maintained a state of war between the U.S. and North Korea for 65 years. And, you know, they promised within 90 days to return to peace talks, to negotiate a peace settlement, and that has yet to be signed. Um, but that's why it's so important that uh, there are people on the ground, that peace, the U.S. peace movement has been revived and has been working with and urging members of Congress to take action. And, you know, if there is going to— I mean, yes, it's great that there is Mattis and Tillerson that is trying to rein in Donald Trump. Um, but, you know, the true check 
on any kind of uh, executive authority to launch a first strike against North Korea comes from the Congress. And um, I think that it's in a really important debate that is taking place. And just last week, uh, uh, Congressman John Conyers, who's one of the two Korean War veterans uh, from Michigan, you know, introduced a bipartisan bill uh, with Thomas Massey, Republican from Kentucky. Um, basically, it's called the No Unconstitutional First Strike on North Korea. And they got Senator Ed Markey to uh, make it a, a joint bill. And so we'll see if Bob Corker signs on. But um, already, uh, Brian Schatz here from Hawaii, the senator uh, Chris Murphy from um, Connecticut, and and, uh, and and Cory Booker have also um, endorsed and backed the bill. So it's a, it's a very exciting time, I think, for a U.S. peace movement that was very uh, deflated, I think, after the lead up to the U.S. invasion of Iraq. And, you know, the time is now for us to push back, I think, to be building alliances with the peace movements in South Korea and, and in Japan. These are uh, historic allies of the U.S. And together, you know, with a unified voice, say, we must stop this brinkmanship. We must oppose war. We must um, stop provocative actions that are done on, on our countries and our militaries, with including the very provocative uh, trilateral and bilateral military exercises that are conducted twice a year, that simulate an invasion, uh, decapitation of the North Korean regime. I mean, we have to look honestly at what our government and our military is doing to provoke North Korea. And, you know, the, the earlier question about, is North Korea ready for talks? I mean, so there was a very important meeting that took place last week in Moscow. Um, Suzanne DiMaggio, who's uh, one of the American um, you know, civil society uh, negotiators that engages in these track 1.5 talks with the North Koreans um, shared a panel at this conference with Madam Che Son Hee, who's uh, one of the lead uh, foreign ministers from the DPRK who negotiates with the Americans. And, you know, Madam Che Son Hee outlined, you know, where North Korea is coming from. And they basically are calling for the U.S. to, ho to stop its hostile policy, um, to stop making threatening um, tweets and, and other statements, you know, t threatening the total annihilation of their country. And, and uh, you know, making uh, such, you know, uh, defamatory remarks, calling their leader rocket man. Um, and, you know, obviously, the, the latest round of sanctions at the U.N. Security Council it's a new breed. It's uh, it's not intent. It's you know it's not intended to go after the elite or the North Korean nuclear or missile program. These are sanctions that are targeting North Korea's economy. It's about uh, textiles, seafood. Um, you know, limiting the ability of North Korean workers to get work overseas. So uh, I think that they are feeling very isolated and encircled, um, and I think that that's an important. Um, note to take note of, because the more that North Korea feels isolated and uh, that they have no channels of expressing their, uh, their frustration with being isolated and being targeted aggressively militarily, um, they will feel, you know, more likely to, to re retaliate. And so I, I think that that's why it's so important for us to call for unconditional peace talks, um, and then, you know, potentially move to uh, seriously consider a proposal about the freeze for freeze that is now backed by both Russia and China, which is uh, freezing North Korea's nuclear and missile program in exchange for halting the U.S. and South Korean military exercises. Um, I think we really need to be pushing for that, and especially ahead of the, the, the war games that will take place in March of next year. Well, Christine, Ann, uh, uh, Trump is, of course, also uh, uh, he's going on this 12 day uh, trip to Asia. And among the countries he'll visit is uh, Japan. Now, you talked about North Korea feeling encircled. And one of the concerns that's been raised is that, uh, you know, Japan just elected Shinzo Abe, Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe, uh, won a two thirds majority uh, in this uh, uh, recent election, which now apparently will allow him or make it easier for him uh, to change Japan's pacifist constitution. So could you uh, uh, say a little about that and what the implications of that are? 
Oh, I mean, it is it is terrifying, actually. Um, you know, to think, I mean, it's just an unfortunate situation. I mean, clearly Abe called the snap election because he used the fear um, by the Japanese people, obviously legitimately, as North Korean missiles were being flown over Hokkaido, um, you know, to basically instill fear and, you know, create a rally around the flag situation. I mean, that's what we're seeing is, you know, it, it's this domino effect among all the countries in the region. And so that's why it's so urgent to actually have a peaceful uh, uh, resolution to the longstanding USDPRK conflict, because now every country in the region is uh, considering nuclear weapons and also um, just further militarizing. We have a very dangerous arms race in Northeast Asia. And it is a tinderbox, basically, waiting to explode. And, you know, this summer I traveled to China and also to South Korea. You know, as you know, the travel ban that was put on me by the, the predecessor, uh, Park geun -hye, was reversed under Moon Jae-in. But, you know, what I did recognize is that um, there are still so much um, trauma. Christine Ahn, I want to thank you so much for being with us, founder and executive director of Women Cross DMZ, a global movement of women mobilizing to end the Korean war. To see part one of our discussion, go to democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Thanks so much for joining us.